Hey Sagittarius, so here we are with your monthly reading for March, well, first half of March, first through the 15th, yeah? Let's get into it. So I do have a, I do vibe with you, with you guys. I, I vibe really well with fire signs. I, I just did Leo's reading and I was telling them that um, Leo is my moon sign, but then I also have two planets in my chart in Sagittarius. I also have my north node in um, Aries and two other planets in Aries while my sun sign is Taurus and my rising sign is Virgo. So there's a bunch of earth in there, but then there's a whole lot of fire too. <laughs> so I really get along very well with the fire signs and the earth signs, but let's see what we've got for you, Sagittarius. First half of March, first through the 15th. Jace, Jace, what we got, what we got? Spirit, please make me a clear channel for Sagittarius. Sun, moon, and rising. Or if you just vibe well with it. Or if you're cross-watching. For a potential mate. I don't know why that's coming up. Maybe there are some of you that are watching for a Sagittarius right now. And if you are, hi! It's nice to see you. <laughs> okay. One more. Shuffle. And then I'll cut the deck for Sagittarius. Sun, moon, and rising. March 1st through the 15th. Okay, cut. A Zedek. What do we have for you, Sag? Starting off with your overall energy. Ooh, ooh, we've got the King of Swords. And when I saw that, I was like, hmm, okay. It's not a bad thing. I am not feeling a bad thing at all. Granted, this is a general reading. I'm reading for a lot of people here. So take what resonates, leave what doesn't. But with that said, y'all are y'all are analyzing something. You're looking to cut something out, but you're being diplomatic about it. Like you're hearing all sides out and you're like, okay, heard, next. Okay, heard, next. Okay, heard, huh. What do I do with this? Yeah? And your best interests are very much in mind here. Whoa, something's burdening you. Ten of Wands. Judgment. Okay, you guys are being called to something. Filed by the Six of Pentacles. You guys are being called to be of service here. Some of you are in some way. Maybe you're a twin flame and um, you're dealing with this moment of being called to step into whatever your service is to the to the to to humanity. Um, for others of you that aren't on a twin flame journey, it, you're burdened by something and um, either your higher self or the universe, God, whatever, is kind of bringing this to your attention. And it's leading you to say, okay, something about this is, is imbalanced. How do I balance it out? And you're being very diplomatic about it with the Ten of Swords. I'm not the Ten of Swords, I'm sorry, the King of Swords. So, um, I mean, that's a really, especially in light of if something, if like you have a relationship going on in your life, Sagittarius, where things are imbalanced and you're trying to figure out how to balance them, either one of the King of Swords or the Queen of Swords would be really, would be perfect, would be ideal. And I do feel like it's upright here. So the King of Swords is actually kind of the perfect energy to be embodying when trying to figure this out because it's not like you're trying to be malicious about it you're really just trying to be as efficient as possible in in removing whatever these burdens are for you okay moving forward in your story we have strength could be a leo there could be a leo in your life you could have leo energy um, with the seven of cups well what else so now it doesn't necessarily have to be a leo uh, but also um strength you're drawing on your strength to make this decision to cut out all of the illusionary things this could actually this could require a good amount of strength because maybe some of these things that are around you are some things that you hold really dear to you but they're no longer serving you they're burdening you they're draining you of your energy and you just got to cut them out i feel like a lot of you are really dealing with some ascension here with judgment and when that comes around, I mean, the things that no longer serve you, if you don't cut them out yourself, the universe will do it for you. So we'll see if the tower comes up, but just know if for some reason 
some of you may be resisting this. We can't resist it forever. Just going to put that out there, okay? If something is burdening you, if it's draining your energy, let it go. Cut it out. Even if it takes all the strength you have to muster within yourself to make that cut, just do it because ultimately it will serve you moving forward. And whatever you cut, remove from your life, then that leaves space open for the universe to bring something better in to replace it. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I just heard y'all say that. Yeah. Okay, moving on. In your story, we have the Ten of Cups. Guys, this Ten of Cups is jumping out all over the place. I mean, it came out for Taurus, uh, Taurus, Virgo, and Leo. It's coming out for you now. Okay. Coupled with the Eight of Swords. Okay, so for you, Sagittarius, you want the Ten of Cups, but you don't know how to get there. You feel like you can't get there. You feel trapped. Um, and this is telling me that the, what's blocking you from receiving this Ten of Cups is your own thoughts, your own belief systems. Understand that you are not trapped in these belief systems. You're not. You can get yourself out of here, okay? That's the point of the Eight of Swords. You feel like you're trapped, but that's just an illusion, all right? You've got quite a bit of illusion around you right now. You've got the Seven of Cups with all these things that are around you that you can, you have to choose out, choose from. You've got to cut away the crap. You've got the Eight of Swords, which is illusionary in making you feel like you're trapped, but you're not. And that is what's holding you back from receiving the Ten of Cups, okay? Whatever that ultimate fulfillment may look like for you, that's what's holding you back, your mindset, your belief systems, okay? And that actually could be what you're analyzing. Some of you may be going through a moment where you're being, where um, the universe is putting all of these uh, negative thoughts and belief patterns in your face for you to see them and analyze them so that you can remove them because they're illusionary, okay? They're not serving you. They're literally holding you back from receiving the 10 of cups, the ultimate fulfillment that you want. And remember that when the universe throws things in our face and triggers us and, uh, put, and, and puts rough situations before us, it's not to sit there and laugh at us because we're floundering around like a chicken with our head cut off. No, it's to teach us so that we can grow, so that we can expand, so that we can heal past hurts, heal the things that are standing in our way. Yeah. Moving forward, we have the Three of Cups. Mm -hmm. Oh, with the Wheel of Fortune. Huh. That's an interesting combination. The Three of Cups with the Wheel of Fortune. Maybe there are some social situations that are um, at play here. Are there some social circles that you've been running with, Sagittarius, that are not beneficial for you? And you're kind of having to say, hmm. I need to cut you out of here. Coupled with the Wheel of Fortune, it's like, I'm just feeling like just rewards are at play. Like karma almost. Like you've been, you've been like attached to this social circle or these certain people or um, maybe maybe there is a maybe you're in a relationship and there's a third party situation going on and you're having to cut yourself out of it out of that relationship. Whatever that is for you, it's saying the wheel of fortune is turning in your favor. I'm hearing karma will be served, whether that's your karma, positive or negative, or whether that's the other party's or situation's karma, positive or negative. Either way, karma is going to be served. And in some cases, maybe Sagittarius, as you move forward with cutting this stuff out, you'll be able to reconnect with friends even. Um, you know, the wheel will start turning in your social favor. Yeah, as you make space for in your life, brand new social circles, brand new relationships can come into play um, that were destined to be to begin with, with the, with the wheel of fortune there. That's entirely possible. Okay, uh, last column. Ooh, three of swords. So I was just talking about a third party situation. Some of you might've gotten your heart broken. Some of you, some of you may have been cheated on. Some of you may be, maybe have, may have been cheating on, on someone else. 
if that's the case, I feel like it's in relation to um, whatever trapped energy you felt like. Maybe you felt like a caged animal and you had to do something about it. Maybe you were acting out in order to facilitate some sort of change, some sort of release of a burden. Let me clarify this before I go too much deeper. Oh, the six of wands. Okay, well, either way, victory is going to come out of this. You're going to you're going to come out on top here, Sagittarius. Regardless of what the situation is for you, how it looks specifically to your specific situation, you're going to come out on top. Ultimately, whatever has gone down is is serving your highest good. Okay, moving forward. Knight of Pentacles. Some of you may end up being single for very good reason, but again, that's not a bad thing. And the sun. Exactly. You see, that's not a bad thing. Some of you, um, some of you may be entering single life in pursuit of another fire sign, like a Leo. Um, but either way, I mean, independence is what the Nine of Pentacles talk about, talks about. So regardless of what you may be cutting out, um, even if you're not in a situation where you got cheated on and you need to leave somebody or you were cheating and now you're single or something, even if it's not that kind of situation, whatever you are deciphering between, uh, whatever burdens you are releasing from your life, whatever, you, whatever you're cutting out of your life is going to leave you in a state of independence that will allow you to really go for what you want, to be able to fill that space with something better that's going to serve you much in a much greater fashion. Okay, do not despair for the sun shines on you, Sagittarius. <laughs> yes. Finally, in your story, we have the seven of pentacles. Again, still taking, still really taking stock here. And ooh, Sag, you have shown up. And the king of wands. Okay, you are um, taking stock here. Okay, the final, uh, the final part of this story is really take a moment to learn through this situation. How did you get here? Yeah. What seeds did you plant to help to, to, to grow this particular plant that blossomed with this particular fruit, which to me is a bit sour at the moment, right? How did you water that plant? How did you nurture that plant? Maybe you planted some really good seeds, but you didn't really nurture them so well. Yeah. And so now you're like, oh, well, that harvest sucks. <laughs> yeah. Ultimately, though, I don't see you losing any passion here for your life or your, for yourself. Regardless of what has happened to you, I don't see you losing any passion because of that King of Wands. If anything, the King of Wands has just, the fires within the King of Wands have just been stoked even more. Because you're, you're, you're coming to a greater understanding of how you got to this material place. And you're coming to an understanding of how you can do better in the future, which I feel like just that point alone of you coming to an understanding of how you can grow better, a better harvest for the future is really stoking more. Like I'm getting excited for you because I really, just me saying that is like, yeah, yeah, stoking the fire for you. Like you're really gung ho about this. All right, Saj. So there you have it. That's the first half of March for you, first through the 15th. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys for the second half 15th through the 31st. I love you all. Take care. Bye-bye.